Patrick Botticelli. Did you ever dream about working from the road? Well, Airstream has come up with something that might make it a little bit easier for you. This is the all new 2021 Airstream Flying Cloud 30FB Office. This trailer is 30 foot 10 inches from ball to bumper. It is eight foot five and a half inches wide. It is nine foot nine inches tall and has a gross vehicle weight rating of 8,800 pounds. Has an interior headroom of six foot seven and a half inches and a dry base weight before options of 6557, giving you a net carrying capacity of 903 pounds. Has a 52 gallon freshwater tank, a gray waste tank of 41 gallons, and a black waste tank of 35 gallons. Let me give you a tour of the inside. Right as you walk in, there are some coat hooks here, key hooks, and a dry erase board. Magazine rack down by the floor. And then straight ahead, there's a 72 inch wide sofa that's 27 inches. So you can remove this back cushion and someone can sleep here. In the front of the trailer, there is a 60 by 75 inch queen bed that lifts up for additional storage. There are two wardrobes on either side of the bed and there's cubbies inside for additional storage overhead roof locker here at the foot of the bed there's a television privacy curtain pulls across to give the bedroom uh, some privacy then over here we have a 76 inch long by 42 inch wide dinette that folds down into a bed and this could seat four people in it so it has a center galley kitchen, has an option to have a convection microwave with drawers below the cooktop, or you could have a gas oven with a regular microwave. A large sink in the galley, stainless steel sink. Has a refrigerator behind this area, easy to get to. And the unique feature is they take a 30 FB bunk model, which would have a bed below this area with an upper bunk bed, and they re-engineered it to adapt for a desk. And this folds out and slides out into a bed, which is 32 inches wide by 78 inches long. To set up the 78 by 32 inch bed, first you pull the drawer out here. You lift the back cushion up, flip this piece over, this drawer slides out, this will then rest on top, we'll grab the cushions out of the closet, you can store them wherever you'd like, and you can leave them at home if you weren't going to use them on a specific trip, and then pull them out when you need them. This uh, sh short piece goes on the end, and then these two bigger pieces go in the middle and I'm 5'9 I'll lay on it just so you get an example and there's a lot of office storage here the filing cabinet drawer additional workstation so you can take a laptop and move it over here if you would like and a drawer as here as well the bathroom is in the back corner. It's a dry bath. So the toilet and shower are in separate compartments. And then it has a little wash sink here off to the side. Now that I give you a basic overview of the floor plan, I wanna explain things in a little bit more detail so you can better understand the inner workings of this travel trailer, starting with the bathroom. If you look in the back of the door, there's a mirror here below. The sink here, there's toilet paper holder. You want to use uh, toilet paper that's safe for RVs and septic. Uh, we also have some deodorizer here for the black tank. This is all pliable with laminate. There's no particle board in any of the construction. And this is not a vinyl sticker. This is regular laminate. Laminate countertop, stainless steel sink here. Premium faucet in the bathroom, GFCI protected electrical outlet. This has a tankless water heater that runs on LP gas. So you have continuous flow of hot water as long as you have propane and your water pump on or if you're hooked at the city water the campground. 
There's some lights overhead. If they're too bright, you could shut certain elements off of each one. So you could adjust your lighting. There's a fan up top. You push up, push the button, and that will vent stale air out. Turn it off, make sure you pull that down. This duct here is the ducted air conditioning system. So it's ducted air conditioning and electric heat pump. This has a 13,500 BTU air conditioning in the bedroom and a 15,000 BTU air conditioning in the galley. And both have heat pumps and they're both through the same exact ductwork. So no matter if you have one on or two on, you have continuous uh, ducting of air conditioner heat pump throughout the whole entire trailer. This trailer also has a forced hot air propane furnace system that heats. There's ductwork down here on the floor all throughout the trailer and ductwork that goes down into your tanks that will give you a boost in your tank temperature if you're doing cold weather camping and you want to protect yourself from unexpected drops in temperatures overnight. Toilet here this is a porcelain toilet. It has a macerator, so it's a, a master flush technology. There's controls here on the side that allow you to flush the toilet and macerate or just fill the bowl if you want to just fill to a higher level because you don't want to drive around with a full bowl of toilet water because it'll splash all around so it only gives you a little bit and you could add more if you need and then there's a tank monitoring system in the trailer but they give you a black tank indicator here off to the side just in case the black tank gets full you'll know when you're on the toilet ocean air roller sheet here it covers these porthole windows Beautiful aluminum interior finish here. It has the same skin grade that's on the exterior of the trailer that's carried inside and riveted in place. The exterior is buck riveted. These are pop rivets. And then there's Ecobat insulation in between the two layers. So you got about two inches of insulation between. The flooring here, this is vinyl sheet flooring throughout one whole piece that goes throughout the whole trailer. And then there's composite deck flooring underneath. So it replaces the tongue and groove plywood that Airstream had for many, many years. Uh, the composite flooring adds a little bit of insulation factor. Main advantage is if it gets wet and saturated for a long period of time, it won't rot or delaminate. And another thing about it, it's one piece. So it's not eight by four sheets of plywood, tongue and groove all put together. Airstream gets this in one whole piece. It's CNC cut at the factory with all the holes that's necessary. And it allows and prevents floor creaks. So it's a big advantage there. Back here, there's a mirror with magnification. There's a towel bar here as well. And then if you step in the shower, we have an ABS plastic wall system, fiberglass tub on the bottom. There's a little seat here in the corner. There's a towel bar here so you can rest and dry washcloths off. There is a clothesline that pulls across and you can lock that in place for light items. You wanna dry your bathing suit. There's a cubby here off to the side that will house your shampoo and conditioner. It has a regular mow and shower diverter. And then the wand here hangs up on the wall. Look at the shower head, really nice. You could pause it and lather up and then uh, uh, without changing your temperature of the water. And it's really easy to clean and wipe down with ABS plastic and it has a roll away shower door. It has a squeegee built into it so when you roll it back it allows the water to run down to the drain. There's a, a grip here on the bottom so it prevents you from slipping inside. Drain plug prevents the water from dissipating out of your pee trap so you don't get any tank odor in your shower. And this goes into a gray waste tank. That's just sink and shower waste. Toilet water goes into a black waste tank. So there's two separate tanks for, for both of them. But the shower being 5'9", I got plenty of the extra headroom here. And plus I got my tall boots on today. But once you get out of the shower, there's plenty of room to get dressed and brush your teeth and activities just in one compartment. And I find that very helpful if you want a little bit more privacy. There are some floor plans that have split bath, shower, toilet, opposite side of the hall, with privacy curtains that close the hallway down. 
Well, if you're camping with teenagers or friends, maybe they want a little bit more privacy. And those four plans, you would have to shut the middle of the trailer down to give them their privacy. Not in this one. This one, they just go right into this whole compartment. They could go about their business and the whole trailer is fully functional uh, while they're in there. Over here, back into the office, there's a directional reading light here. So if someone wanted to hang out in this lounge here, I could see kids playing back here. Uh, you have the ability to have some light. Behind me, there is an emergency exit window. You just pull the two red handles, twist, and then you can lift this window up for ventilation. You get three different lights to choose from. But in emergency, you could pull this cord here and that will unravel the screen so you could get out if you need to. It's very important to make sure your windows are locked before you transport. There's a cubby here you could put some toys inside of. And then there's also a strap in here that when you want to put the desk chair away, you could strap this in and prevent it from uh, moving around while you're transporting. So it's like a stanchion type strap. If you want to put some additional equipment in the cubby, you could also run wires in and out here. And then they have a power tower with electric and USB. This will work when you're plugged into electricity at a campground, but there are several inverter circuits on board. There's a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter that will take your stored battery energy and invert it into electricity for small appliance items. Over here behind the chair, there's a racetrack here for some plumbing and uh, electrical wires that have to run through. That's why it's boxed up like that. There's another area here that allows you to uh, run wires up and down. And there's an inverter circuit, right electrical outlet right behind here. That's the one you're going to use when you're not plugged into electricity. Another window that opens, Vista View window up top here. Blackout lining and all the curtains, and you got full privacy when you pull these across. There's uh, another USB charge here. These will work when you are not plugged into electricity. It works right off the battery system. There's an HDMI that you can link to the front Blu-ray player and the TV system. And there's a cable here if you wanted to put another television back here. This cubby here is for additional office items. Again, duct work throughout the whole entire trailer. These are directional and you can turn ducts on and off as needed. Closet here. You can hang some shirts in this closet here. The filing cabinet drawer goes back up to the cubby here, uh, but you can put some small files in this area. And then all these cabinet doors have a J latch here that keeps the door shut. So you need a good amount of force to open that up. That way it doesn't open when you're driving. This extra workstation here, that's full extension. And this drawer here goes partially up. And you got another one here that's hidden inside. So they really utilize the space, excellent. And then this is just part of the bed uh, when we fold the bed out. Privacy curtain here that pulls this whole area if someone's gonna be sleeping back here. There's a sunshade here for the fantastic fan. This fantastic fan has three speeds, has a rain sensor built into it, a thermostat, and it's exhaust only. So when you open that up, you can change your speed. You can have just a fan off and have it as a vent, or you can set your temperature. If it rises above what it is right now, the fan will kick on. And then if it does rain, it will shut down. In the kitchen area, there's some pantry storage here with a lot of drawers all the way down to the bottom and that's the furnace duct and then on this side you got all these drawers here and above we have another wardrobe there's a light inside this wardrobe this houses all the cushions uh, that are made up for the rear bed area down here on the floor there's a gas leak detector so that senses uh, the air quality in the trailer uh, but this one is also a CO detector as well. So instead of having a separate one on the ceiling, now it's all incorporated into one. And this area here is the battery charger. And it also converts AC to DC as well. and has all the breakers for your electrical outlets, AC current. 
main 50 amp breaker. This is a 50 amp service trailer because it has two air conditioners standard. And then there's 12 volt fuses for all your components like the stereo and the water pump and the lights on board. And if one of those fuses was to blow, there is a red LED light that will illuminate next to it to indicate that that particular fuse is blown. Like I mentioned before, it comes standard with a gas oven. You have an option to just get the extra drawers here if you weren't gonna utilize a gas oven. To light up a burner, I don't have propane in this trailer, but I'll give you an example. Put it to light, spin the sparker over. Each one of these is sparking right now. And whatever one you have on, it will ignite. And then there's an exhaust fan, there is a louver you have to open on the outside, and a light here to illuminate this area. And it's got uh, metal grates here that are removable so you can clean underneath here. And these little handles light up. Some people get excited about that stuff. This flips down to give you extra work surface. This uh, vent here has a filter you can clean periodically if it does get dirty. And then this is the interior decor of a flying cloud. So this has the sunlit maple and then it has a glossy gray upper slab cabinet door. Uh, but there's a lot of them. They're all plywood with laminate and they go all the way up to the front of the trailer where the bedroom starts. You have a task light here underneath the cabinet, LED that illuminates this area. And then we have the sea level two tank monitoring system, which allows you to indicate and uh, discover your battery uh, level, which is 13.3 volts. We're plugged into electricity right now. Your fresh water, uh, well, we're empty, but if we had 50%, it would say 50% your gray waste and your black waste all from here. So uh, I flushed the toilet a few times and uh, there is some water in that tank so it indicates we're at 5%. The water pump here, the demand water pump, uh, when you wanna use a faucet, you're not hooked up to campgrounds water pressure, well you gotta create your own water pressure and you do that by turning on a water pump. That pump will kick on and pressurize the water system of the trailer and then shut off and then when it feels a drop in pressure the pump would kick back on and then as soon as you shut the faucet off the pump would shut off. Uh, sink cover here some people use them as cutting boards. Underneath here there's a cutout area for a trash pail and then storage below that. It boxes over the wheel well so think of a bed of a pickup truck it's not completely flat there's boxes for the wheels. Well, the same thing on the travel trailer. The wheel box starts about here and ends about here. That's why this one doesn't go all the way back. This one doesn't go all the way back. And you have the, the panel here in the back here. Convection microwave uh, option upgrade. So it has electric element in the top. There's a fan in the back that glows and it circulates hot air around your food and acts as an electric convection oven. When you want to just use it as a regular microwave, you do have to remove some trays and there's a carousel in there and you'll just use the regular microwave settings here. Civil War organizer drawer here and another beautiful ocean air shade here in the galley. And ocean air shades throughout except for the front and back caps of the trailer. This has the optional solar charging system. There's two 90 watt panels on the roof of the trailer and two absorbed glass mat group 24 series batteries uh, in parallel. And that will uh, gain some energy from the sun and store it in those batteries. That is a factory option. It's a very popular factory option. So I suggest getting it. And there's room for expansion if you wanted to add some more panels on the roof. If you don't get the solar charging system, Airstream still puts the solar prep, the port and some of the wiring in the trailer but they don't ship it obviously with the panels, the controller, the display, as well as the batteries. It will not come with batteries. Your dealer will give you a battery to get it home because usually if you don't get the solar, you plan on doing your own system. The inverter system on board, the Progressive Dynamics Inverter, you can turn that on and off from here. That's very important. To, it's a point of use. So when you're ready to use the inverter, you turn it on. When you're done using that electrical outloft inverter, you'd shut it off so you don't drain the battery when it's on standby. Two directional reading lights here over the lounge. Two more ocean and roller shades. 
And then we come to the audio system. There is a JL audio stereo system. And in order to use that, you have to turn on your antenna. You have the aerial antenna on the roof of the trailer that uh, uh, allows you to get broadcast over the air television reception, but also stereo reception. And then there's speakers throughout the trailer. There's two in the bedroom there, and then there's two in this galley area. And there's a subwoofer hidden down below. So you got uh, five speakers in the trailer. Series of remotes for all the different, you know, tel two televisions and the Blu-ray. There's USB charge ports here off to the side. Look at the premium hardware. These doors are fully adjustable depending on how much tension you want and how high you want the door to go. Uh, this is really nice stuff that they put in this. And then this system's all plugged into the inverter circuit. So if you want it to run the Blu-ray off the inverter system, you have ability it's plugged into that outlet. Below the lounge here, there we have another furnace duct. This flips down to give you a storage bin here, but you have a cubby here. This is great for shoes, I, I think, on this one. And then this one here is not storage because that is the return for the propane furnace that's on board. Uh, so you want to keep this clear. You don't want to clog it with anything. Definitely don't put a filter there. Talking about filters, let's talk about the air conditioner. One here, one in the bedroom. These are the intakes for the air conditioner. It's very important periodic to clean these, whether you take a vacuum or you take them down and wash them in the sink. If they do get clogged and they got clogged quick with lint in a small room, uh, they will overwork the air conditioner, cause it not to work properly. It could potentially harm the air conditioner. So that's a service tip for you there. Over here on the wall, we have the thermostat and that controls both zones. So there's zone one and two in this trailer. You could sit between both air conditioners so you know which one you're turning on or off. And once you get your zone set, you could change the mode from air conditioning, auto, heat pump, fan only or off. So zone two would be the bedroom and that does not have a furnace option because that's on zone one. You have the same things here. You have air conditioning, which will cool auto, which will turn on heat pump or air conditioning, depending on what you have your temperature set and what it needs to do to get you there. You could just turn on the heat pump, which works about 42 degrees and above. That's electric only. So keep that in mind. It won't work if you're not plugged into electric. And then you have the furnace, which runs off a battery to spin that blower and uses propane as its fuel source to create the heat. And then uh, you have, if you keep hitting mode, you could turn the whole system off. So a lot of people get confused because they don't know which zone they're on. Just look at the zone one and two, and that will allow you to understand what settings you're changing. You can change your temperature up and down from here, change it to Fahrenheit to Celsius, and you could also check your inside temperature, which is 69 right now. Uh, you could set a clock, a program, and you could change your fan speed. There's three speeds in the fans in the air conditioner and heat pump that you could go from low, medium, high. If you put the fan speed on automatic, it would automatically turn the fan speed up and down and the system on and off, depending on if you call for heat or air conditioner. And then this whole button here just turns the whole panel off. The Dometic refrigerator, this is an absorption style refrigerator. So uh, it has a heat source behind it, whether it's a propane flame or electric element and it absorbs the heat out of the refrigerator and allows it to go outside and lowers the temperature. Once you turn it on, it takes about seven hours to cool down this whole entire compartment, bring all the heat out of it. And once it is cool, it stays cool for a really long time. So I recommend turning this on the day before you go on your trip and then put your food items in once it's cool. And then when you hit the road, shut the refrigerator off and this acts as a big cooler as you're driving it. And it's, it, it will stay cool for several hours. So there's no need to risk leaving it on and leaving your propane on when you're traveling. Also, there's, when you're done with the refrigerator, you don't wanna just shut the door if you don't have it on because the moisture inside will cause the refrigerator to mold out. And I do see it quite often. But they give you these airing cards that you slip over the handle, okay? And then you could clip it in and that will keep the door partially open to allow airflow so your refrigerator doesn't mold out on you. And there's one for the top and one for the bottom. And then when you turn the refrigerator on, obviously there's a light inside that will come on when you have the refrigerator on, you could set it on automatic. And automatic, it will search to see if you're plugged into electricity or if you're not, it will run on propane. 
right now it decided it determined that we're plugged into electricity so it illuminated the ac which is alternating current which is electricity if i turned it off of auto i could have it mainly run on gas say if i I uh, was plugged into a small electrical cord and I had just enough energy to run an air conditioner or a microwave. I had not enough maybe to run the refrigerator. Well, you could switch it manually to gas so it doesn't run on electricity. And then if it tried to run on gas and you didn't have any propane or the tank wasn't on, what would happen is it, would, it wouldn't ignite and it would illuminate this check light here to tell you that it tried to run on propane but it couldn't and it shut off. And then you could change your temperature setting. Everybody always puts it up to the cold ist which is number five but if it's 40 degrees outside this will turn into a freezer so you want to adjust your temperature based on the outside ambient temperature three is where my go-to is unless it's 100 degrees out you can put it all the way up to five dinette area folds into a beautiful bed let's remove some of these little decor items we set up today and i'll show you how the table goes down before i get into that this is the owner's bag that Airstream gives with the trailer inside here has all the manuals for the components that Airstream installs in the trailer. Some of the manufacturers don't have manuals anymore. They're online. You'd have to download them. But whatever comes in the boxes they put in here. And then Airstream has their own manual. And there's a newbie's guide to owning an Airstream that's run, written by a third-party author that's included, which is really cool. Uh, the fabric here, this is ultra leather, and there's two interior decors. This is the Seattle Mist. It's a gray tone. They also have a Carolina Clay, which is a tan tone interior decor. Those are your two decors, but they both have the same cabinet, same floor, same countertop, same pillows, same bedspread. It would be identical except for the color of the cushion. The Seattle Mist happens to be right now the most popular interior decor. So this table, there's a lock on the bottom and that allows you to slide the table out, right? So say if I wanted to get in there, I could slide the table out and I could get in here and I could lock it and I have a, a great area to sit. If I wanted to angle this table and sit in the corner, say the kids are playing outside, these windows are actually great for that. Uh, there's not a lot of floor plans that have what we call curbside or camping side windows. Well, if you have a family and you have kids, this is your side. This is where your picnic table and your grill and everything's set up. That side is your neighbor's side. So it's really nice to have these big windows here because you can sit and work and, and eat and still have a view of your campground. But that table comes out not only for gaining access in and out, but to make it into a bed easier. So we have to unlock these two clamps here, all right? And this is telescopic. And what's gonna happen is it allows me to push the table down. And what I'm gonna do is work the table in. I got it underneath there. Okay, now I gotta get it underneath here. So instead of removing every single cushion, I was able to work it in, I locked it in place. Now I have another bed, 42 inches wide by 76 long. You could take all these cushions here and slide them underneath. But to give you an example, I fit perfect here at 5'9". I could even spread out a little bit if I wanted to. And there's plenty of room in here. And the foam density is, is incredible. Airstream does a great job sourcing high quality products. Look at the stitching here. The holes drilled that allows the air to come out. The zipper here, so if you wanted to refoam them. Uh, it, the, the craftsmanship in the cushions and everything about the Airstream is definitely a step above what other products I've seen out in the market. So get the table out, undo the clamps, slide it out, work it out. The table comes up, lock, 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 and you're set. Underneath there's an electrical outlet. There's a cubby here. And guess what? If you had something's too big and you want to get it in, you can still get it in from the top. They do give you the lid. That box section here is the wheel well we explained later, uh, before. And then this one's another storage here. And say if you wanted to put a bigger item in, these hinges are not only adjustable if you take the cap off, 
It's different adjustments to square it. Uh, but they're removable. You could undo the lock on the back and you could remove the door and stick larger things in if you needed to. Television here in the galley. It's in a fixed position, does not swivel. And then over to the side is that antenna booster I spoke about before for television reception and radio reception. And there's an inverter stick circuit here off to the side. So this television can run off the battery system. In the middle here, we have a skylight galley with shade, they call it. Another fantastic fan, a smoke detector. And let's get back up to the bedroom. When I lifted up the bed before to show you the storage, what you might not have seen is that you have access to the trunk. This is the front trunk from outside. If I wanted to grab something out of there, I can from in here. It comes with the bins, right? These come sliding out of the side. This one flips down. But now you can see, this is the grade of the plywood. This is a Italian light ply. It's a poplar that Airstream uses. It's all CNC cut. It's even laminated. Like this part really doesn't need to be laminated, but Airstream did. It, it allows it to be stronger, prevents it from warping and uh, it's easier to clean. So they're very mindful for that stuff. The bed itself is a pillow top, memory foam mattress. The storage doors at the end of the bed on either side have a wardrobe rod in it so you can hang some shirts. And you got a big cubby here in the bottom. Another electrical outlet here. This happens to run off the inver inverter circuit. In these cubbies, there's USB charge ports up top so you can charge your phone, you can put your glasses down here. Directional reading lights, full blackout curtain, big overhead roof locker. These are the bed pillows. So if you want to get an idea on the size of this cabinet, you know, an average bed pillow fits in there with plenty of room left over. Two more intakes for the air conditioner. This one's for the bedroom. This window is another emergency, a big trail, right? So we got a couple different ways to get out, but you can pull these handles, twist, undo the latch here, or just use it as a regular venting window. And then clean, simple curtain balances. On this side, we have a repeat of what we had on that side, but at the foot of the bed, we have a television on an articulating arm. So I could pull this TV out and have it right in front of the bed if I needed to. And then on the wall, which looks like a speaker, that's the sensor for zone two. So this senses your bedroom temperature and communicates with the thermostat in the galley. And then bedroom ceiling light, you can shut that off and dim it down because there are dimmer on the ceiling lights in the trailer. There's an opening here. So if you want to take your boots off when you come in, you got a place to put them and you could fit several family members' shoes in this storage. Airstream welcome mat, a magazine rack, just for example, I put a flyer in there. Large fire extinguisher. You have several light switches, one of them for an LED light in the awning, but then your main ceiling lights here. Heavy duty grab handle here by the entry door. And uh, this is a lifesaver, a little bumper. So if you forget the duck, on the way out, there's a little bumper here. Airstream thinks of all this stuff. They've been doing this for 90 years. This is a 90th anniversary trailer. So in 1931, Airstream was started by Wally Beim and uh, they're still building the iconic trailers today. So for any trailer that's built from January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2021, we'll have this little medallion here on the screen door. Let's go over pricing. The MSRP, the current MSRP is a 2021 and a half. Base MSRP is 107,500. There's only a few factory options available and this has each one of them. The convection microwave upgrade is $475. The window wanting package we're gonna see when we get around to the other side is uh, $1,850 and that's very valuable. And then the solar charging system we spoke about with the absorb glass wet batteries is $2,600. Airstream has a national destination charge of $1,650. So it's just, that's to get the trailer to the dealership. Every dealership pays the same amount. So the total MSRP of this trailer is $114,075.
Screen door. Screen door guards are standard. The screen door detaches from the main door, swings around, locks in place. This fills the gap here. TIG welded, stainless steel hinge, six rivets on each hinge. Very heavy duty. There's uh, from the vinyl floor to this extruded aluminum bottom rail, there's a piece of aluminum here that allows you to sweep the trailer out easily. Grip tape so you don't slip on the way out. Grip tape on the aluminum steps. You just push this up, push this around, lift on the front, put it away, flush. So when you're traveling on the highway, you have nothing hanging down that's gonna get caught on anything in from the uh, spare tire to the regular tire. To get it out, lift up, make sure it locks in place. Sometimes it might not lock. You make sure it's firm. And then to get this one down, you pull from the back. And flip it over. It's that easy. LED light here by the entry door. RVAA certified sticker that it meets building code standards. And then this is a certified green Emil rated trailer. Airstream is very proud of that. The materials they use, the production standards at the factory, earned them the Emil rating. And you can look up different manufacturers if you go to certifiedgreenrvs.com. The entry door has an extruded aluminum gutter rail over the top that prevents water from coming inside. This big extruded aluminum structure is also tapered, so if water got behind, it would still allow it to run out. Heavy duty grab handle here by the entry door. Aluminum cladding here at the back of the door. A catch to keep the door open on a windy day. And then there's insulation in here. This is equal bad insulation. Buck riveting. We talk about it every video. We're so proud of this door. Eight hours to manufacture each entry door. Heavy duty deadbolt lock here and a main door lock. So there's not like a master key that uh, is in the industry that could get you into an Airstream. Uh, unfortunately, if you lose your keys, you're gonna have to get a locksmith to get you in. Uh, different brand RVs might use similar keys. There's a master key so you could flag down someone else at the campground and they, anybody could get in your trailer. That beautiful sound when you close that entry door, so tight, sealed all the way around. Heavy duty cast aluminum, beautiful hinges here. And then this is the belt line protection that covers the two seams of the trailer. That's all buck riveted in place behind there. And then this is the rub rail that transitions the body under roll to the side sheet. And then underneath the trailer, there's aluminum. All, it's fully enclosed, the whole underbelly. Even the tanks, they're dropped into insulated chambers so it's a metal chamber around the rotocast polyethylene uh, tank. And then there's flex foil insulation below the subfloor in between the underbelly. So there's a gap there, allow some airflow. This is the center support for awning. We're gonna get to see that a little bit later. LED running lights, always tow with your parking lights or headlights on your tow vehicle, which will illuminate these so you're more visible. That will also power a backup camera or driving camera, which we're gonna see just a little bit. Goodyear Endurance, load range E, 225, 75, R15 tires. These are rated to be up to 80 PSI and you can go up to 80 miles an hour. It's always important to check your lug nut torque before every single trip. If you ever remove the tire, you gotta check your lug nut torque after 5, 10, 25, 50 miles just to make sure it's sat correctly on your hub. This has never lube hubs, but it does not mean never check. So these, you don't have to repack like standard trailer bearings, but you do have to check them periodically, make sure there's no play in them. This has never adjust brakes too. So it's a self-adjusting brake drum assembly. That doesn't mean never check. So you do want to ch still check your brake linings, the brake shoes for stress cracks, overheating, uh, rivets coming off of them. So it's very important. Uh, Dexter uh, rubber torsion axle system, less moving parts. Uh, no, uh, very little wear and tear on this axle system compared to leaf springs and it's a very quiet axle system. There's a shock absorber on each wheel as well, so there's four shocks total. This is the exterior porch light or scare light, bright LED light. This is one of the vents for the refrigerator. It's an intake vent. You can see here the drain tube for the pan inside the refrigerator for any condensation. Allow it to drain out and there's a little bug guard on the end. 
This compartment's all lined in aluminum and sealed. Uh, if you want to compare to other manufacturers, open the refrigerator and just see what's behind here. Usually you'll see wood, uh, but if this got wet, it's not going to rot out anything. And there's a, even a bug screen here as well. And then up top, all the way on the roof behind the awning, there's a ventilation system for the top of the refrigerator. So you have natural airflow behind the refrigerator. Outside GFCI protected electrical outlet that will be powered when you're plugged into shore power at a campground. This is Gerard tankless water heater. Uh, there's really not much to do out here. Uh, the on and off remote switch is inside, but you can turn it on and off from out here if you wanted to. Don't store things in here. Don't store things in here. Um, this is just a service access point. I wouldn't recommend hiding keys in here either. Uh, that's not what it's intended for. Underneath the trailer, and we have a low point drain for the plumbing line leading to the water heater. Tank chamber, this is one of the tanks here, insulated, actually two in this one compartment. And then there's a plate here that lines up with the frame. Since this underbelly is completely enclosed, you don't know where the frame is. So this plate with this sticker that says jack points to the frame that allows you to discover where to jack the trailer up. And where's the jack? Well, the jack's in your tow vehicle. Most tow vehicles have a jack rated enough to pull up one part of the trailer. If you're not lifting the whole entire weight of the trailer, you're lifting up one side of it. So uh, just check the specs on your jack. And then tools, you might have to get some tools to remove the lug nut and make sure you check the size because there's variable different size lug nuts that Airstream uses. Back here, we have cat beautiful cast aluminum LED taillight assemblies, rear window awning. Uh, this is a, a gray material, sombrella, very easy to clean. If you want to understand how to clean it, you go to Sombrello's website. They do have a cleaning guide. Pull down on it. These swing around. And this rolls up. And there's a spring tension that keeps it in place. There's no latch on it. Metal wrapped and protected. You'll see the gutter rail over each one of the windows as well. Flying cloud medallion here. License plate bracket with light. Rear trunk. Lift up. Twist. And open. This has a special key to lock it. This is insulated, weather sealed, double protection, and gains you access. You can see some of the plumbing drain lines here, but gains you access to additional storage that's underneath that back bed area with a light inside to illuminate it at night. Backup camera monitor. So this is the piece that goes in your vehicle. You plug it into a 12 volt socket. You turn your parking lights or headlights on in your vehicle, and that will then power that camera and it's, uh, uh, it's wireless, so there's no wire or connection that you need. You just need your parking lights on. That's standard on all Airstream traditional travel trailers. Polished aluminum, beautiful bright aluminum rear bumper with bumper storage. This lifts up and gains you access. There's a rubber mat in here. I could put blocks of wood. Anything that has ground contact that gets dirty, that wet, you can throw back here. I wouldn't put it in your trunk because your trunk's, trunk's nice and clean. This area is going to get wet and dirty anyway back here. So anything that has ground contact, I would throw back there. Coming around, this has four stabilizer jacks. All four corners of the trailer have jacks to keep that trailer from bouncing around when you're walking around inside. Well, Airstream gives you a multi-tool here, right? This comes with it with all different size sockets, 19 millimeter, 21. Uh, there's uh, a socket on here, uh, a regular half inch drive that you could put a regular socket and zip it down using this. You could use that same socket to take your tires off. They give you this though, this is to get your jacks down. And on this particular trailer, you use the BAL stabilizer jack system and the jack pad bottoms are five and a quarter by five and a quarter. So there are aftermarket blocks that you could have that snap onto those instead of having used blocks underneath it to give you a wider service. But once you hit the ground, give it a little torque. You're not lifting the trailer off the ground. These are not leveling jacks. These are stabilizer. If you want to level it, you could use leveling blocks underneath the tires. And there's lots of vendors that make their own series of leveling blocks. They look like little Legos. You could stack them up and level the trailer. How do you know when a trailer is level? Well, you could lay in the bed, or you could see how the water drains in the sink, or you could bring a carpenter's level with you on the road, 
put it on your battery box on the outside of the trailer or on your floor by the entry door, and then you can see if you're level there. This here is your cable inlet. When you go to a campground, you hook up to their park cable uh, or a portable satellite dish. If you wanted satellite, you put your portable dish outside, you get it all positioned, bring your receiver and set it up inside. This is another window awning, spring tension rolls it up, except it has a travel latch. So you can use your awning tool for that, or I could reach it and do it by hand, but that prevents it from coming out when you're driving. The waste system. This is the most feared thing for most first time RVers, but there's nothing to it. It's so simple. Airstream even gives you a light. So if you're trying to do it at night, you can see what you're doing. Colonial Airstream gives you a lot of cool stuff with the purchase in our RV starter kit. Uh, one of them is a really nice waste hose. Now, there's all different grades of waste hose on the market. We believe this one is the best for the money. And what's nice about it is it has an elbow that detaches. So you could screw this into the campgrounds dump station. There's all different sizes. Get it all screwed in. Or if their their threads are stripped, you could use this rubber donut and get it secure. And then you would just take your cap off. Now always be prepared for a little bit to drip out. Okay, this is regular water. And then snap on your waist hose, secure, right? Pull on it. If you want that secure, so when you pull the handles, you don't have the rush and it knock off. And then this snaps into here. And once you have everything firm and secure, Best practice is to empty your black tank first. On this trailer, it's labeled as a main tank. On some trailers, it's going to be labeled as black. You pull that handle straight out. There's a blade valve that'll open and allow the waste to discharge and come out this common tube here. And then it allows the waste to flow through and you get a clear elbow in the end. Not that you want to watch, but maybe you want to see when it's done draining uh, so you can see what's going on inside. Once that's done, you close the handle put the tethers back on, and then you open up your auxiliary wash or gray tank, right? Same tank, different names. Pull that straight out. Now all the sink and soapy shower water will then come through and clean out this discharge tube and clean out your waste hose so that when you go to put it away, you don't have any waste left in it. And then you close that when you're done and lock the handles. I would never recommend leaving the black tank open. Because what will happen is when you flush the toilet, the waste sits in the tank and whatever water runs out and you got waste build up in your tank. So it's very important to leave that closed and then when it's time to empty, whether you have a quarter, a half, three quarter or full, pull it and get that big discharge of waste through your waste hose. And I would never recommend leaving your gray waste tank open because you need that water to clean out your waste hose. This has a storage tube I'll point out when we get up to the front of the trailer and when you're done using it, you can put it away. And this is a 10 foot hose and it collapses, right? You can get a 10 foot extension and hook it on the end of this and both of them will fit in the waste hose. And then this you can put in a big zip block and put in that rear bumper storage. After you empty your tanks and you're all set to go back home and put it away in storage, I would recommend as best practice to use your black tank flush. Black tank flush has a wand inside your black tank that sprays the walls of the tank down and gets rid of any residual waste. After you have emptied your black tank with the hose still hooked up, leave the valve open, hook up a garden hose, not your nice clean drinking water hose, and let it run for five to 10 minutes and allow any residual waste to come out. Then you could follow through with your gray tank and I'll uh, clean out the rest of the waste that's in your water hose. Above this is a city water connection. So when you go to a campsite, you have options. You could hook up to their city water if they have it at your site. You take this little cap off, get your uh, fresh water drinking hose, right? Not just a regular garden hose. Hook that up to their water spigot and to your trailer and turn on the water and you'll have their water pressure now running through all your faucets. And it will only add water as you turn on a faucet inside. This will not fill your fresh water tank. There's a separate connection for that, which I'll show you in a bit. This also has a water pressure regulator built into it. So if the campground had an unexpected spike in water pressure, it's gonna protect your tank. And then these are just little vinyl gloves you could use for the waste. In this wheel well here, there's a little tube here and there's one there. Those are the condensate drip lines for the air conditioner units. 
So instead of having water running all down the side of your trailer, leaving stains in it, there's gonna be a steady drip coming from your wheel well. A lot of non-airstream owners might knock on your door at the campground and say, hey, your trailer's leaking. You might wanna check that out because it's close to where your water would be. Uh, it's the condensate drip tube 99% of the times. In between the wheels here is the 52 gallon potable water tank fill. So I could undo the lock here. This is a 751 key. Take the little cap off and then I could take that hose and fill the tank. This is not a pressurized fitting. This, you put the water on low and allows the tank to fill and some air to relieve from the tank. And then below the axles, there's a drain valve here that you can open and it allows the tank to drain down when you're done using it. You don't want water sitting there for weeks. And then there's some low point drains for the plumbing system for winterization. Above here, we have the outside shower. So it's hot and cold. It's nothing uh, too extravagant. It's just hot and cold water outside. So there's a wand and a faucet. And you can hang that up here and use it. You can hose off your water hose, your power cord, anything that's dirty before you put it away in storage. You get back from the beach, you could shower out here. This is the ventilation for the cooktop. So there's two little latches here that swing over. And that will that's your travel latch or storage latch. So when you're driving, it's not flopping around. But when you want it to open, when you put the fan on, just make sure those latches are free. Another window awning that covers multiple windows here. That rolls up and there's another latch here that you can lock as well. Smart plug. So instead of the old Marine Co twist lock, they just made it a little bit simpler. That's how you unplug your trailer. That simple. And it has a light that illuminates here to let you know you have power coming in. You never know. There's series of depth. There's a big 50 amp cord and you need full 50 amps if you're gonna run both air conditioners at the same time. Colonial Airstream gives you a 50 to 30 amp adapter. So what it does is it adapts 220. There's two hot leads, a neutral and a ground. Adapts it to 125 volt, 30 amps. So it terminates one of the legs of power and only gives you free prong. So you got your hot lead, your neutral, and your ground. And then we also, at Colonial Airstream, give you one of these. And that's still a three prong, but it lowers the amperage so you can plug it into a regular 15 amp electrical outlet. So if you wanted to charge a trailer, just use the microwave, you could use this. If you need one air conditioner, you need to plug it into this. If you need both, you need to plug it into this one. All right, the waste hose storage tube I spoke about before, this cap comes off and that's how you put the waste hose away when, um, when you're not gonna be using it when you're traveling. And then they improved this. It's really tight, it's hard to get in, just so you don't have to fear about it coming off when you're driving. You can even put a lock on it now. Furnace exhaust, this is hot, so if the kids are playing around here, just make sure they don't touch this, and if you don't park next to anything combustible, because this is really hot coming out of here. This is the VIN plate with the tire information, tire pressure, production date, model. If you ever have to check the specifics in Airstream, and it's uh, after 1980, you wanna check on this side of the trailer. Heavy duty rock guards, stainless steel wrap protectors, we call them. You take the three nuts off, this is on a piano hinge that could swing out so you can clean the leaves and debris out from behind here. Well, why would they put it so far from the body like that so stuff could get back here? Well, it allows some deflection, right? So if you hit something in the road, this could bounce in and out and hopefully won't damage the body behind it. This is the solar stone guard, all right? This protects your front glass window. Now, a lot of the trailers, they have a full panoramic front window. Uh, this doesn't, this is just aluminum back here. This protects that curved aluminum from denting and pitting. Uh, it also keeps the static so this trailer looks like every other one that has a primary front window. But you have to be able to clean the aluminum behind it periodically. So you take these tethers off, lift this up. This then locks in, you can adjust your height. But then it will allow you to not only open your window, but it allows you to clean your window. And then if you take a screwdriver and turn a quarter turn, this swings out. 
Now don't overextend it into the body, but swing it out enough so you can lift it off the hinges and lay it on the ground and then clean and wax the aluminum behind it. And it's very important to lock that down with your tongue because that can fly open if you don't have it secured properly. And put these tethers on as well before you start towing. You can bring the trailer up and down using an electric hitch jack. It's wired to the battery system of the trailer. There's a light here to illuminate this area at night. There's a bubble level that if you have the trailer completely level, you can tighten these screws and put the bubble in the middle and get an idea if you're close to level, but I wouldn't worry about calibrating. This all moves, so it's never gonna be 100% accurate. <clears throat> if you have battery failure and you have to get out of the campground, this cap comes off and you can put this on and you can manually crank the trailer up and down by hand. So that's uh, useful. Over here, we have the trailer seven way. So your vehicle is required to have a seven way wiring harness, standard trailer plug, but you also need a 12 volt charge lead. So you wanna make sure your vehicle's alternator is charging the trailer battery as best practice. You also need electric brake control in your vehicle. So this trailer has electric drum brakes on all four wheels. Those drum brakes have to work. So uh, you have to have electric brake controller in your vehicle. When you hook up the trailer with a two and five sixteenth inch ball, it has a Demco coupler on it that lifts up and allows the ball to come in. Colonial Airstream gives you this hitch lock that prevents this from being lifted up so no one can steal your trailer. You also might want to use a weight distribution kit with sway control, like equalizer or blue ox, or you could go premium and do the Pro Pride hitch. Those are available factory direct. You have safety chains, which you have to crisscross uh, for your vehicle. These are 5 16 inch hooks, heavy duty. Uh, that attaches to your hitch receiver on your vehicle. And then you have a trailer breakaway cable that has to be securely fastened to your tow vehicle that if this was to come disconnected, that it would pull this plunger out, which would then activate your brakes. And you'd never want to use this as a parking brake because it'll burn your brakes out and burn your battery down very quickly. The frame here is a box frame, steel, so it's not a seat channel, so it's very sturdy. Airstream gives you a quick disconnect hose for your propane system. This slides into this fitting here, locks in place, and then you can turn the gas valve on. And then if, once you have this fully secured to a low pressure barbecue grill, you could do some light cooking in this area. They purposely don't give you a long cord because they don't want you cooking underneath your awning. You could create a fire that way. The battery box here, Colonial Airstream gives you a lock on it so no one steals your expensive AGM batteries which are about $350 a piece. You can see they're, they're put in parallel and there's some fuses on them. You wanna check your terminals here for corrosion and you wanna make sure they're tight. And uh, this is the clamp that holds the batteries in the box and the box is fully ventilated outside. This is the front trunk compartment. You lift, twist, lift, twist. That opens and wow, you got a lot of storage underneath this bed here. There's even a light here off to the side. Airstream even gives you a sticker that tells you this is where your solar pre-wire is if you didn't get the solar charging system to make it a little bit easier for their owners. Airstream is very mindful of that type of stuff. This opens up and gives you access to your propane tanks. This nut comes off. It's a threaded rod here with a clamp that keeps these tanks tight. Colonial Airstream gives you full tanks of propane when you pick up a brand new Airstream here. And these tanks typically ask my customers the season. Now they see more people working from the road. You might go through a little bit more propane, uh, but it's not gonna be something you're filling all the time. There's a regulator here that allows you to switch from left to right tank. And uh, you just wanna inspect your propane lines periodically, especially when you open it up for the season. You, you might find a squirrel's nest in here and it might have chewed through the lines. So it's always, Best practice to leave your tanks off, not only when you're towing, but when it's in storage too. Coming around here, we have the spare tire. This spare tire is the same size tire that's on the trailer. There's a pin you remove with a little clip, and that will allow the tire to drop down. And then you can lift your electric hitch jack up to gain you access to that. And uh, you want to check your tire pressure on that every time before you go on a trip, so you don't want to have a flat tire and then your spare tire is flat too. 
The VIN plate for the trailer, the metal VIN plate here on the bat on the battery box. And then up above here, there's a ZAMP solar quick disconnect port. So if you want to do an external panel, you could plug it in here and the panel that you put in external will have its own controller built into it and that'll help trickle charge your battery if you're parked in the shade with the trailer. The final thing I want to show you is how to operate the awning. First thing you want to do after you check the weather to make sure there's no heavy rain or winds coming through is close the entry door. You don't want to get that caught up on the awning. This is the awning tool that comes with the trailer. So you can operate the side awnings and your main awning. What you want to do undo is the wheel locks here. It's a threaded piece with a uh, wheel on the end. It sits in a little cup up here. Undo that, push in. That's one. There's one all the way in the back too. And these don't have to be super snug when you're traveling. You want to snug it down just enough. There's a travel latch here, twist. Then we're going to grab the little strap in the middle. Once you get it in, you're going to pull. Now it's in my hand. Drop the stick. You don't want, you don't need that anymore. You'll see the LED light here at the top of the trailer. Beautiful. Now this is spring loaded. It wants to go back in. So you want to make sure you got a good grip in it, right? And you can roll this all up nice and, and neat and stuck it in a little pouch. But just for now, I'm going to roll this up in a big bunch and get it stuck under here so the awning uses as a break, right? Now I'm hands free. If I didn't do that, I would just have to hold it the whole entire time as I was going down. If it's a little breezy, sometimes it's best practice to hold it. Once I get down to the end, I gotta utilize this rafter arm that sits on a little perch out here. All right, and this has a hook on the end that looks perfect to go here, right? No, that's, that's a big, big mistake. It cannot go here. It has to go at the end of the roller wheel. And to operate the awning, it's easier to do everything from inside, underneath the awning. So we'll get that in place. Now there's a spring in here, right? We gotta get this raft arm to collapse and lock in place, which will take all this tension of the awning from going up. That's it. Once you do that, this little pin drops its little notches. Boom, we have this side set. Before we do anything else, we gotta do the other side. Inside the awning, locked in place. Now that we have the awning locked and loaded, we can lift it up. But before we do that, I want you to see the material that they use. It's multiple sheets all sewn together. Very high quality sombrella material. We have to get to the end and you always utilize your the roller wheel as your lift. You don't want to be lifting over here. And these are square tubes. So this is square that comes in and out, and this is square. If you twist them, they're going to lock and give you a lot of trouble getting up. So put your elbow at the end of the awning, pull that out, and lift. That's how easy it is. If you pull this thing, it makes it so hard. You keep this square up. Now, once we get it up, we got to look out here. One, two, three. Uh-oh, we got to be on four for the door to clear, right? So remember that rhyme, four by the door. This side's closest to the door. We need to go up one more notch. That's it. Now, we can go all the way down to this side. And this is not a rain awning. It's not a wind awning. It's a sunshade. So you want to put it away if you get wind or heavy rain. There, that's on four. This doesn't have to be on four, but I put on four to have it level. If you wanted it tilted slightly, you could leave this side down on different settings. Now there's a big, long awning. There's a lot of force on the middle of this awning tube, right? So for long stays, we're gonna utilize this center support, which is another rafter arm like at the end, but instead of a hook, it has a pin that fits into this hole and lock that in just like you did the sides. And to undo it, you just do everything in the reverse. Well, this is Patrick with Colonial Airstream in Millstone Township, New Jersey. I hope you enjoyed the tour of this trailer. This Airstream is available on display at Colonial Airstream. We are now, now are accepting pre-orders for 2022. 
Our telephone number here is 800-265-9019. You can follow us on the web at colonialairstream.com, Colonial Airstream on Facebook and Instagram. And if you want to follow me, I'm Colonial Patrick. Thanks, and we'll see you soon.